A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear the word of the Lord, princes of Sodom. Listen to the instruction of our God, people of Gomorrah. What care I for the number of your sacrifices, says the Lord? I have had enough of whole burnt rams and fat of fatlings. In the blood of calves, lambs, and goats, I find no pleasure. When you come in to visit me, who asks these things of you? Trample my courts no more. Bring no more worthless offerings. Your incense is loathsome to me. New moon and Sabbath, calling of assemblies, octaves with wickedness, these I cannot bear. Your new moons and festivals I detest. They weigh me down, I tire of the load. When you spread out your hands, I close my eyes to you. Though you pray the more, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves clean. Put away your misdeeds from before my eyes. Cease doing evil. Learn to do good. Make justice your aim. Redress the wronged. Hear the orphan's plea. Defend the widow. Febum Domini. To the upright I will show the saving power of God. To the upright I will show the saving power of God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you, for your burnt offerings are before me always. I take from your house no bullock, no goats out from your fold. To the upright I will show the saving power of God. Why do you recite my statutes and profess my covenant with your mouth? Though you hate discipline and cast my words behind you. When you do these things, shall I be deaf to it, or do you think that I am like yourself? I will correct you by drawing them up before your eyes. He that offers praise as a sacrifice glorifies me, and to him that shows that goes the right way, I will show the salvation of God. Dominus Fobiscum. Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Mateum. Jesus said to his disciples, or to his apostles, Do not think that I have come to bring peace upon the earth. I have come to bring not peace but the sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's enemies will be those of his household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. 
Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever receives a righteous man because he is righteous will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink because he is a disciple, amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. When Jesus finished giving these commands to his 12 disciples, he went away from that place to teach and to preach in their towns. Verbum Domini I'd like to welcome Father uh, Sylvia this morning. He's been working hard all week with Johnette on their show, The Abundant Life. And uh, we thank you, Father, for all your good work here. Today is a surprising gospel. You know, Jesus here is saying he's a cause of division. Do not think that I've come to bring peace upon the earth. I have come to bring not peace, but the sword. And we have to balance this with other uh, statements from the gospel that he does give us a message of peace but this peace comes through a real transformation it's not a piece of compromise jesus tells us clearly in the world that that uh, if they perse- he tells us you know if they persecuted me so they shall also persecute you remember simeon's prophecy that he will be the cause of the rising and the fall of many he will be rejected he is the cornerstone that's rejected Uh, by the world, and even those of Israel, some of those of Israel. So being a disciple of Christ means that we follow in that path, and we will experience discord and rejection of our message, that the message will sometimes uh, be this cause of division. He tells us today as well that being a disciple of, of his is above all other relationships, even family that by following him, it might result in this division even within a family, the most deepest bonds, you know, that we can imagine. And this is a challenge to us because we at times can make an idol of the family and our relationships. Our our spouses, our children, our friends can become idols, can be our source of peace and not God, that we seek to please them over God. We seek to do their will over God. God's will. That could be a challenge for all of us. He tells us clearly, though, that love of Christ as much comes before the love of family and even our own life, right? We must be willing to lose our life to find it for the sake of the gospel. So being a, a disciple of Christ means that we have to accept the weaknesses that the cross presents to us, the difficulties in our life, and that we must surrender to God totally. That's what he wants here, a total surrender, which means this acceptance of weakness. And then this permits God's peace to come into our hearts and into the world. You know, if we're true to Christ in this way, not just giving this assent to truth, to the truths of our faith, but a real self-surrender, a real following, even when it costs us something. And I think a challenge for us as well is this acceptance of the cross and these difficulties that come in our life. You know, this past week we had a powerful witness on Life on the Rock. She uh, was a, a, is a paralytic, and, um, and her name just totally escapes me. I can't remember her name right now, but the powerful witness to uh, Chelsea Zimmerman, sorry, Chelsea Zimmerman. And she talked about the acceptance of weakness and how hard that is in the culture that we live in today. You know, to accept the limitations that we have. But if we can do that, you know, we can have uh, Christ's peace in our hearts. God's word purifies and transforms. We're told in Hebrews 4.12, the word of God is alive and active. It cuts more keenly than any other two ed- than any two-edged sword, piercing as far as the place where soul and spirit, joints and, marrows div- and marrow divide. It sifts the purposes and thoughts of the heart. God's word purifies and it transforms. The gospel, Jesus tells us, must be preached to all nations. This word 
must go out, right? And it will be rejected by some, but it will be transformative for all, that he's come to set fire on the earth. And this fire that he wants to set ablaze is the transforming energy of the Holy Spirit, right? And as I mentioned last week, you know, the kingdom of God is destined to transform the whole world. That's what he's, that's what he's come to do. And he's going to present this whole world to his father at the end of time, transfigured by, transformed by his glory, renewed. The world is fallen. It needs to be fixed. It needs to be made holy. It needs to be purified. And this is oftentimes uh, resisted. Peace, we see, comes in its fullness through the Paschal Mystery. It comes as a fruit of the resurrection. It's on the other side of the cross, so to speak. And there must first be a purification, a transformation, before we experience the fruit of peace. Peace, we could say, is a fruit of the sword of the word of God. Jesus tells us, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. I do not give it to you as the world gives it. In John 14, 27. In the world you have tribulation, but have courage. I have overcome the world. He speaks of peace before his crucifixion, but we think also of the resurrection appearances where he breathes on his disciples and gives them his peace, gives them that Holy Spirit, a fruit of the resurrection. So we as disciples follow in his footsteps. He tells us today to pick up our cross, that we have to go through this purification, this transformation as well. The peace that the world gives oftentimes can be a, a peace of compromise with the truth, of infidelity, sometimes just wishful thinking. Right? We can be Pollyannish. I mean, we have to be realistic and look at the world and see that there is much that needs to be changed. We can look within ourselves, say, I can't be in heaven forever like the state I am in. I need to be purified. I need to be detached. I need to have humility. I need to die, right? That's a transformation. I need to die and rise again. A real change, a real transformation must happen before this peace can come. That we, something in us, something in the world needs to be put to death and raised again. God's holy word affects this transformation. And Jesus, of course, is the word of God. And he shows us the way. And as disciples, we follow him. And he gives us the most challenging teaching today. Whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. I think that's some of the most challenging words in the gospel to take up our cross. But that is the path of peace. That is the path of transformation. But the good news is that through faith, we have a Messiah, a Savior, who's done that before us, and that we join our cross to his. And in that cross is our purification, our peace, and our strength. He's the one we go to, we pray to, we have friendship with, we have communion with, gives us the Holy Spirit, the grace to live this gospel, you know, to follow him and to offer you know, our cross with his.